Hello and welcome back to Handheld Computing. Today we're having a look at the Compact Aero 2100. This palm-sized PC boasts the most advanced colour screen. Well, we'll have a good look at that. Compaq, as a company, are better known for creating their IBM compatible PCs, many of which were both cheaper and faster than IBM's own computers at the time. The first product they launched was the Compaq Portable in 1983. This was far from ease when it came to portability, often referred to as a luggable. But these luggables are the ancestors to modern laptops and UMPCs, so who better to create a line of portable computers running Windows CE? Compaq entered the market in 1998 with the Compaq 120. Like all first generation CE machines, it could be upgraded from CE1 to CE2, and as Microsoft changed the focus towards the palm sized PC, the Aero 1500 was born, to be soon followed in April 1999 by the Aero 2100, running Windows CE 2.11 with a 256 color reflective screen and the later ability to upgrade to Pocket PC. So let's take a look. So here we have the box with its boast of the most advanced color screen. So it's a high resolution reflective TFT color display. Easy viewing in any light now. I would argue that's not necessarily true, but we'll look at that in a bit. Long lasting lithium ion battery. So we're not on double A's anymore like the Nino 500, for example. Audio player for recording voice memos or listening to web audio content offline. Compact flash expansion slot and an ergonomic design for ease of use. Also includes a free audio book offer. So we'll look at that again in a minute. On the side we've got the model number the 2120 along with what should be contained in the box. On the other side we've got the system requirements for connecting it to your computer and on the back we've got a little bit of a breakdown of what's going on. So it's got a compact flashcard slot, pop out stylus, sadly mine doesn't pop out anymore, um, infrared port of course, TFT color display, 256 colors, external speaker, customizable programmable buttons, instant backlight on and off, we love an instant backlight, audio player, a versatile alarm, silent vibration or audio tones alerts you to events from appointments to wireless paging. So the vibration doesn't actually work on this model and again we'll visit that shortly. Cradle, lithium ion battery, scrolling button, voice record button and this one comes with a headphone jack. It's a mono headphone but it has a mic input as well. Nothing interesting on the bottom or the top so let's take a look inside. So as we open it up we've got a cardboard inlay which has got all the bits and bobs. So here's the device itself and its slipping case. The case is unusual because it appears not to fit the device. So it leaves the compact logo exposed, the compact flash card exposed and the uh, buttons on the side exposed. It's a design choice. It's not one I would have made. The case itself had actually split down the side So I've just used some electrical tape to repair it and I think it looks pretty good So we've also got a power adapter. So this one's unusual and um, it's got a two pin plug and an adapter I don't know that this is the original one, but um, that's what I've got in here This is the standard cradle You can get an upgraded cradle with a slot for a second battery to charge at the same time as your device and um, it's got a serial cable of course because of the age of it in here and possibly unused is a single earphone and mic setup so as i say it's a mono headphone and mic all connected together and that's so you can listen to audiobooks or you make and record voice memos so we'll take those out in the bottom we have some of the paperwork so we've got the Compaq Aero software, which we'll look at in a bit. We've got some options information about accessories you can get. Mentions the Dulux cradle, a second battery, sync cables, a better case. I mean, anything would be better. Portfolio case. There's a travel pack which includes spare styluses, extra battery and uh, adapter for use on the go. Of course, memory cards, memory expansion module because this can go up to 24 meg of RAM. I only have eight on board this one. Second AC power and uh, one for your car. So we'll just pop those there. So this is a support guide, but there isn't any support anymore. 
what did you software agreement form a second cd which actually just contains the reference guides a quick start leaflet and um, for setting up the compact with the cd some important safety information in many many languages and last but not least a quick start guide so there's nothing too exciting on here just tells you how to plug it into your computer so we'll get rid of that so you'll notice the one thing i'm missing is the user manual now thankfully you can download one online so i've done this and there's a link below there's a couple of bits i thought i'd share with you so after the introduction there's a couple of great examples when your aero is going to impress the people around you so imagine the scenario while walking with a colleague your cell phone rings and your boss asks if the two of you are free this afternoon for an emergency emergency meeting. While your colleague fumbles through his paper organiser, you simply press a button on your aero and instantly see a list of today's appointments and meetings. You're quickly able to tell your boss when you're available. Well, let's take a look at the device itself. So unlike the Nino, there's no buttons on the side. Instead, they've all moved around to the front and there's still a couple on the other side. We've got a 3.5 inch display, 256 colors, and it's a reflective screen. And we'll look in more detail at that in a moment. There's a mic slot at the top. We've got an indicator LED for charging and alarms. So we've got calendar contacts, do and notepad. At the bottom, we've got the power button. This is also for the front light. On this side, we've got an up down button which presses in for accept. This is a back button and this is the record button for voice memos. On the back, we've got a memory door for upgrading the device. So your ROM and RAM goes in there. Here we've got the battery compartment, speaker. On the bottom, we've got the backup battery door, jack for charging, and of course the sync connector. And on the top, we've got the compact flashcard slot, second hole for the microphone. We've got a mono output jack with microphone input, infrared, and the stylus, now the stylus would normally pop up when you press it, but I'm afraid my spring has sprung. The stylus itself is quite nice to use. It's got a little bit of flex, um, but it's a good size. The compact flash card has this protector that comes pre-installed, it's just a plastic blank. It's a type two fitting. So whenever there's a compact flash card in there, there is a little bit of a gap here where things can drop down. We'll pop some batteries in and take a look. So we're gonna put the main battery in first as always, so as not to wear down the backup battery unnecessarily. The backup battery goes in this little door. So let's power it up. So that's the first and last time we'll actually hear the vibrate as the vibrate function doesn't work on CE 2.11. Let's get through the setup. We're going to take a quick tour of the built-in apps, but none of them have really changed since CE2 with the Philips Nino. And there's a link to that here. So of course, we've got a calendar function. It shows day views, week views, month views, and of course, an annual planner. The week and month views just show busy blocks. They don't actually show any text. The only way to read what an appointment is, is to be on the day view itself. Unfortunately, the um, up down slider on the side moves you up and down the day rather than through the appointments and the weeks. So to move to the following week, as there's no arrow bar here, you need to move onto the calendar and then select the following week. A little bit of a pain, it would have been nice if the slider slid through the days rather than sliding up and down the day. Everything else is very much the same and we'll have a look at the contacts. Once again, no real change here, putting in, in a new contact. We haven't really gained any new features. We've still got business options, home options, and then categorization. And of course we can add notes to either of these. Again, the task list very much unchanged. We can still filter on categories, which is very useful. And of course, 
filter by active or completed tasks. Finally, the notes also unchanged and there's the quick tips. We'll just get rid of that. And this allows you to write notes on the screen. We've got all the same options as we had last time, including the ability to create template. Once you hit OK, and it'll save it as note one. If you press and hold the button, it will create a new note, which is very handy. And if you use the keyboard to add text to the top, when you hit OK, it'll save it with that name. So this is a handy function. The note taker function on here is very useful and the ability to either handwrite or use the keyboard is excellent. One of the options we do benefit from having a color screen is the ability to alter the color of the line that we're doing. So we can change the line width and we can then alter the color. So if you're wanting to create a drawing, you can certainly do that here. Up at the top, we've got the quick launch for the recorder app. Once you hear the beep, you can start speaking and it'll save it as an audio file. There's a couple of different options in terms of the audio files themselves. If we look at the recording formats, we can see we've got mobile voice and PCM. In PCM, we can choose various bit rates and obviously we get better quality depending on the bit rate you choose. Under mobile voice, you just get the one bit rate, but the quality is quite good. Although for compatibility, if you're transferring it to your computer later, you're better off using the PCM compression. We'll pop it at eight hertz and 16K per second, and just do a quick sample. Sample memo number one. So I'll pop my microphone near the speaker so you can hear the quality. It's not too bad. It's unfortunate that it's a rear mounted speaker where on the Nino and quite a few others, it's front mounted. Sample memo number one. As you can hear, it's quite loud. It's not perfect, but then we're only recording at low bit rates in order to save memory. From the start bar, we can access channels although these are a bit redundant these days, uh, your usual options, including your inbox, which will sync with Outlook if you're using Outlook pre-2013. Got access to the other programs. And then of course, down here, we've got communication options, connections, active sync, and your PC link. We've got Solitaire, and we've got a link here entitled Audible Player. Now, actually, this is just a shortcut to tell you that you need to install it from your CD. And of course, if you're going to do a lot of voice memos or you're going to use Audible Player, you're going to need a compact flashcard in order to store them. We've also got a calculator. There's a compact flashcard backup, which is very useful, of course. And there is now a built-in picture viewer. So there isn't a picture viewer in CE2, but in 2.11 there is, and we've got a couple of samples. So it's a very basic viewer. There's no fancy option options for zooming in and out and um, you can slide between the two pictures but again it won't shrink to fit the screen or anything like that but if you wanted to see a picture or show somebody a picture you now can. So under the system settings, we've got a couple of new settings. We've got an asset viewer, which basically just gives you a little bit of a rundown as to what we're running. So we're on palm size PC. This is the Aero 2020 tells you about the display and that it's color, although it doesn't say, but it is 256 color. We've also got version numbers, including the OS number, and we've got the amount of memory. So you can see that the ROM size has grown a little bit. We're now at 10 meg. Not overly useful, not really sure that it's necessary, but it's there. After that, we've got buttons, which allows you to alter how long the repeat rate take. And then of course you can reassign the program buttons to whatever you want. We've got a communication setting. So this is to help set up your PC connection. And as you can see, we've got various speeds. And of course, we can choose the infrared port. We've got the dialing options, which is for your modem. And in display settings, we can alter what appears on the home screen and we can adjust the backlight settings. Although it says backlight, it is a front light. It's not currently on. We'll look at that in a bit when we look at the screen. We've got the input panel, same as we did on CE2. So we can choose keyboards or the jot recognizer. We don't have transcriber installed on here. That's not until the next revision of Windows CE. And we've got word completion options. We can set up the owner properties in here, which will display on the home screen. We've got password settings. So of course you can password protect this device. Regional settings allowing you to alter currency and things. Oh, so I'm still set to United States. So we'll have that back to United Kingdom. Thank you very much. And then all the numbers and currencies should follow suit, which they do. There's remove programs. We've not got any installed, so there won't be anything there. We can calibrate the stylus. There's a system button which is much like the asset button. It just shows us what's going on. In fact, we've got no card. 
we've got the memory option, and we've got the task manager. So this is the only real way of closing applications. You have to come to the system, to the task manager, and then you can close things, which is a bit annoying. We've got the taskbar options, like on full-size windows, you can hide the taskbar, you can have it show the date, and then you can also alter your start menu options. So here are the options that we've currently got, and you can delete them. So channels, for example, we're not gonna use, so we can remove it, and once we hit okay, and there we are, it's now gone. Scrolling down, we've got volume and sounds, pretty self-explanatory, screen clicks, hardware button clicks, you can opt for those, and you can actually adjust your sound. So it's possible to import your own sounds for different bits within the system for a little bit of customization. There still isn't the option to customize the windows themselves or the appearance, but it's a nice touch. Finally, in settings, right at the bottom, we've got the world clock. The world clock can also be accessed at any time by double tapping the time in the taskbar, which of course is much better than scrolling through settings down the bottom to find it when you just want to set an alarm or see what time it is in Paris. So I'm going to install a few applications that are off the CD. Imagine the scenario. You're meeting your friends tonight for dinner and a movie. You download the latest movie information from the internet to your computer and synchronize it with your Aero. At dinner, you pull out your Aero and review your movie options with your friends. Let's take a look at some of the applications included on the CD. So we've got a finance database. This is quite a complicated piece of software, but it allows you to put in expenses, costs, deposits, essentially in a database style to manage your finances. It also includes currency conversion and various other bits and pieces. I'm not going to go into great detail with this as it is a complicated piece of software and it's not one that I'm going to actually be using. We've also got a dictionary, and this is a Spanish-English dictionary, so you put a word in and it'll translate it for you. So there we are. It doesn't have all words. In fact, there are plenty of words it doesn't have. So for example, if I put sock in, it tells us it doesn't have the word and offers us some other words that we might be interested in. It can convert either to Spanish or from Spanish to English. There's a couple of view settings so you can go back and forth through the bits you've looked at, zoom in, zoom out, and restore your default settings. And there's a help menu as well. So also from the CD, we've got Cool Calc. So this is an advanced calculator. It's got a few different modes. This is the scientific mode, but we've also got an RPN, computer maths, basic, which of course is just a basic calculator. We already have one of those elsewhere. There's a time value of money. And essentially what this is, is an interest calculator. So you put in the value of something at the moment, the rate it will increase by, and then it'll tell you what it value will be in a number of years. There's a loans calculator. This is similar in that you put in your rates, the amount you pay in, and it'll tell you how much you'll have left or how long it will take to pay it off. There's a currency converter, always useful. And there's a date calculator. So we can set a new date, set it as the end date, and then it'll tell us how many days we've got left. So this could be very useful for working out how long you've got until a given event. There's also a copy function and you can choose whether you want sounds or not. And under here, you can actually edit and record macros so you can run automatic calculations. So CoolCalc actually is quite a powerful calculator application and well worth having. Finally on the CD, and perhaps the one that's most interesting, is Audible Player. So only the demo Audible Player parts will work, and that's because you can't connect to the Audible server anymore. Also, the format of compression that Audible were using at the time is no longer available. And because it's a proprietary compression, it's not possible to convert files back and forth to this format and then synchronize them with your compact. However, at the time, I think this would have been a very useful application. So I'll just pop my mic down here so you can have a listen. Congratulations on your purchase of a compact arrow and welcome to audible.com. So in here we can select the audio program. So these are the installed ones with the demo. 
and you can listen to any of these. And on this one in particular, it's actually got a written version underneath so you can see what it says. We've got volume control, a bit about audible player, additional controls and bookmarks so we can create bookmarks and skip back and forth. It's a shame because this would be a nice player. The compression is very high. So as you can see from here, it says that the device will hold an hour of audio for every two megabytes of available memory. So even with a relatively small compact flashcard, you could hold an awful lot of audio. So the Aero uses a reflective TFT. These came in and out of fashion quite quickly, replaced by the transreflective TFTs later on. Was it the most advanced screen at the time? I think this is a resounding yes. It's the only reflective screen on the market and for outdoor viewing there is nothing better. Is it the best screen at the time? I think the answer to that depends on your usage. If you're outdoors a lot, then yes it is, without doubt, the best screen you could get at the time. If however you spend a lot of time indoors in normal lighting conditions, it's a bit rubbish and a standard DSTN or STN screen is probably much better. Reflective screens themselves were quite short lived. The advantage is under good lighting conditions, you don't need any form of light produced and therefore you save a lot of battery power. So these should be very good low power color screens. I have two other devices with reflective TFTs, the Sony Clear 770 and of course the M505. So here are the three of them side by side. None of them have the front lights on so this is just illuminated by the lights in the studio. The lights in here are very bright. I'm gonna turn them off now and we'll just see what it looks like once the camera's adjusted. And I think we'll agree they all look pretty good. I would say that the Sony one looks better but it is also the newest. It also has the highest pixel density. One of the big issues with the M505 is that the low density of pixels means that you can actually see the black spaces between them. So I've set the front light to max brightness and you'll see there's no question about it, the Sony wins hands down. Now to be fair, the M515 had a much improved backlight. With all these screens, what you get is a little bit of a prism effect if you tilt the screen. And that's because that's where the light is coming from. So on the arrow, as you twist it to the side, there's where the light comes from. If we do a comparison between the backlit screen on the E115 and the Compact Aero, you'll see in an outdoor setting, the contrast is much better. In this mid-light setting, both are usable. There's a slight preference for me for the TFT. It, it definitely seems a little bit more contrasty. But once you get into low light levels, the TFT really comes alive with much better contrast and better color saturation. The battery on the Aero is rated at about eight hours use. However, I did replace the battery in this unit and I'm only getting three hours if the front light is off and about two hours if I'm using the front light, which is very poor. There's three possibilities here. The first is that the battery I've got isn't performing very well. The second is that with age, there's a current leak somewhere, i.e. a capacitor has been damaged and is therefore bleeding power away. And the third option, of course, is that we were lied to in the beginning and eight hours was nothing but a pipe dream. With not having had one of these originally, I can't tell you which answer that is. But I can tell you that on the E115 with its 20 year old battery, I still get about two and a half hours. And of course, this type of screen has its light on constantly. Overall, CE 2.11 doesn't seem very different from CE 2. One of the big advantages is that there is a lot more third party applications for it. I did, however, find that the Aero crashes quite a lot when compared to the Philips Nino. I'm unsure as to whether this is to do with the operating system or perhaps one of the bits of third party software I put on it. But when I say crashes a lot, I mean if I'm in regular use, two or three times a day I'm having to soft reset the device. There's also a couple of annoying glitches. So after a reset, the keyboard or the block recognizer doesn't pop up properly, it doesn't display properly, and the only way to get it to work properly is to switch between the two of them. In use, I found the Aero to be quite laggy. So just to demonstrate, here's the compact next to my Philips Nino. So I've opened a new notepad and of course I can write on the screen. So if we turn them both off, when I turn the Philips Nino on, I can pretty much write straight away and you can see it just records it. If I do the same on the compact, you can see it takes quite a while 
before it actually starts to recognize anything and then of course goes a bit crazy. So I thought this was probably due to the system overhead. However, here is the Cassiopeia E15. Now, it's a little bit battered, I grant you, um, but we put it in the same program. So I'm going to power it off and then I'm going to power it on and straight away I can start writing. So this is clearly an issue with the arrow itself. Now it might be related to the color, I'm not really sure, but the lag is noticeable whenever I'm changing applications, not just in launching them after a cold start. You can see it's near instantaneous on these. So I'm unsure as to whether the lag is due to a slightly defective device or whether it's just the general strain of running the color screen. Either way, I dread to think how laggy it would be if I upgraded to CE3 or Pocket PC, although that does assume I could actually get my hands on the ROM chip. The buttons on the front necessitate two-handed use unlike the Nino although they did put a couple of little dimples so you can press the buttons using the stylus. If you're mainly using the device outside this screen is excellent giving brilliant color and contrast in outdoor conditions however in normal room illumination the backlight on this is not bright enough and the colors look washed out and on the blue spectrum whereas in a transmissive TFT they look bright and sharp although admittedly not very good outdoors. Perhaps you have an Aero and your experience has been different. Perhaps you've upgraded it to Pocket PC. I'd love to know whether or not that's worth doing. As always, if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit like and subscribe so you don't miss my next one. And finally, I will leave you with this from the user manual. Now imagine this. A calendar reminder alerts you that it's time to catch the bus. You grab your Aero and catch the bus just in time. This one's particularly interesting because you've just spent £400 on a PDA, so you clearly have a job. It's 19 so fuel costs 62p a litre on average. Why on earth are you catching a bus? But I digress. As always, my name's Hugh. This is Handheld Computing. Thanks for watching.